what up everybody welcome to lunatic Bruggy. today we're gonna be discussing andre okay he is a very very vile man so let's make sure that we get this warning out of the way So, Andre, he was born in the Ukraine, okay? As you can see, the little man. He was born to a very poor family, and I mean very poor family. Like, they didn't have food. They didn't get paid for working at, as farm handlers they got rights to be able to plow their own field and grow what they could. So, a lot of times, Andre and his family had to eat grass. Well, when the war came, World War II came, him and his family ended up having to... Okay, so when the second war came, his father ended up being captured by the enemies. Well, if you know anything about the second war, they would, when they would go into like different villages and stuff, they were essaying the women. What happened was his mother got S8 in front of him. She ended up getting pregnant from this SA. So, he had to live with the fact that his mother was s in front of him. Does this give him any excuse? No, it does not. But, it does go into the fact that he ended up with borderline personality disorder because of the simple fact that his mother was essayed in front of him. Well, he ended up continuing to help working at the farm while he was going to school. He didn't have the best of grades when he went to school. He did have some, but... There was points and times where he was passing out from being hungry and basically starving to death at school and at home. So, he ended up going without a lot. Now, you got to remember the nutrients that we get as a child to help develop our brains. Am I giving this man an excuse? No, because what he did to these people were very vile. Okay? I'm just explaining that he didn't have the nutrients growing up to develop a full functioning brain. So, as an adolescent, he ended up learning that he was impotent. And he could not arise to the attention. So, he would get bullied a lot for it. Well, he ended up going and applying for uh, Mo Moscow Scholarship or University. He didn't get in because his great people did better than him. He did good, but people did better than him. But he believed that it was because his father was deemed a traitor because he was captured. So, he ended up going to a trade school. And while he was in trade school, 
He ended up joining the military, did his two years, hopped out, went back and worked at the farm with mom and dad. He did not like it. So he ended up going to a different college and he ended up being getting a teacher's degree. So he goes back to Roskov and becomes, as he's back near his family, he ends up talking to a divorcee. Well, she found out that he was impotent. And when she found out that he was impotent, she mocked him and made fun of him. And he didn't like that too much. So he ended up running away. He ended up becoming a teacher. When he became a teacher, his sister introduced him to his wife. Who, I don't know if she knew what he was doing. But it doesn't really say. But he ended up having two children from that relationship because he would sploosh on said leg. Or like her. <laughs> um, he would sploosh near it. And she would push it in. Basically, she turkey based her. So, so he could have two kids. Now, he ended up buying like this little rundown hut in Resolve. So, when he was in Resolve, he ended up taking a nine-year-old Yolanda. I believe that's how you say it. Um, she was his first victim. But let's back it up because I totally forgot. While he was a teacher, he had two cases where he um, essayed his students and was caught fondling himself in front of other students and never once did he get in trouble for it he never got punished they they didn't say shit to him so he ended up being forced to resign and he moved to a different school and when he moved to a different school district again he had to be resigned due to the simple fact of all the cases and complaints of essay he was doing to his victims so now this baby girl she was nine years old okay and y Yolanda was taken from a bus stop and like walked into the hut because he had this thing where he would like give them gum and you know things to kind of break the ice and make them feel secure and then he would abduct them well she like when they found her body they found so much evidence that andre did what he did uh blood outside of the hut his back her backpack literally down the riverbank from um um there was and there was eyewitnesses including his neighbor that said andre was there okay andre was seen with her andre was there so instead of arresting andre there was another gentleman 
that was already charged for the crime of taking and essaying a 15 year old so they just blamed that dude instead of andre like he had an alibi and they're like yeah no cops are like you're not gonna be his alibi cops are like you're gonna say this or you're gonna go to jail with him and just threatening his alibis well this dude ended up getting tried and convicted and like had to go in front of the gun squad because of andre so andre has that over his head too so i'm considering that andre's second victim now in september of 1981 he ended up taking larissa who he approached at a bus stop and was like come with me i'll get you drunk and she followed him when she followed him she ended up getting unalived but because he didn't have a knife he ended up using a six foot stick and mud he would put mud in her mouth to keep her from screaming and so now we enter where he really started going out of control and he had a way about him okay he had an mo like in all of his victims they all had the same exact thing happening to him except a larissa um he ended up biting her nipples off the only one that did not so the only one that he did not end up doing the same things to was yolana so from larissa down keep in mind he would multiple multiple we're talking 20 30 stab wounds so on top of the stabbing he would also like gouge out their eyes that is one thing in all of his victims they all had their eyes gouged out like almost like away so they couldn't see him because now remind you he could not arise to attention he could not get it hard no matter what he did but he would imitate like he was saying them okay and then he would repetitively stab them and gouge out their eyes and just it was horrific so larissa follows suit with how he was he, like his people the people he abducted and lured into wherever he could unalive them uh larissa was the very first one that he actually did that to so on june 12th he ended up taking a 13 year old girl named labo on which she was trying to return home from a shopping trip in the village and he ended up abducting her and this started the manhunt 
this would start the manhunt for him. So, on July 25th, he ended up taking a 14-year-old female who was named Lavov from an airport. And he would do his unspeakable vile acts against her. Now remember, there is 53 victims. He would abduct and do unspeakable things to. If I say their name wrong, I'm really sorry. So on August 13th, 1982, he abducted a nine-year-old boy. Unfortunately, his body was never found. So Oleg was never found, and that is heartache, heartaching. August 16, 1982, he ended up taking a 16-year-old Olga, Olga, who was a runaway from, well, boarding school. He would promise her alcohol and take her and he ended up doing his unspeakable acts. Now, at this point in time, he's still married. But he would ride the buses. He had a full-time job, too. But he would ride the buses home from work. Or the trains home from work. And abduct these children or if he had to go to the store he would abduct a child or a worker a night walk worker september 8 1982 he ended up taking an 18 year old irena she was found on September 20th. September 15th, 1982, he took a 15-year-old boy named Sergey, who was a runaway. What he did to Sergey was unspeakable. There was no soft tissue left on his body. They thought he was a female until they did a DNA test and it determined that he was a male. December 11th, he took Olga, who was 10 years old. Again, he took her from a bus. Sometime after the 18th of June, it was in June, but they don't know exactly what day, he ended up taking Laura, who was a 15-year-old runaway. Now, remind you, most of his victims are runaways or ex-workers in july of 1983 he took arena another arena who was a 13 year old female and the arena was mentally disabled which makes it horribly worse because she was one of those people that trusted people. And when he gave her candy, which was part of his M.O., 
she followed him and he proceeded to do horrible acts to her. So, July 1983, he took a 24 year old homeless mother and her two children, which is just vile. So, he had like he unalived her and her two kids. Now, remind you, she's homeless with kids. And he's like, hmm, I'll do it. <sighs> Homie needs help. Um, Her name was Lamidia. Lamidia. L-Y-U-D-M-I-L-A. August 9th, 1983, he took Igor, a seven-year-old little boy. Which, this little boy was one of... The, he was the first male victim linked into this manhunt to find him sometime in july or august they don't exactly know when in 1983 he took a 18 to 25 year old female unknown like they still don't know who she is in september of 1983 he took Valentina, a 22-year-old female. October 27th, 1983, he took a Vera, who is a 19-year-old female. December 27th, 1983, he took Sergey, who is a 14-year-old male. Again, he, Sergey was one of them where they found DNA evidence, which we'll get into in a second because here soon he will get arrested for the first time. Okay, so let's continue. Natalia on january 9th 1984 she was a beautiful 17 year old female um she was actually close friends to olga which was his sixth victim so she's already like upset spaghetti and depresso to espresso because her friend Olga was unalived and he ended up unaliving her too, which is bullshit. Oh, put him in the wood chipper. <sighs> February 21st, 1984, he ended up taking Marta. March 24th, 1984, he ended up taking the Murte, which was a 10-year-old boy. He lured from a stamp collector. Or not a collector, but you know where you... Okay, so he it was like a stamp area where you could go in and buy stamps. Um, he, he pretended to be a follower and collector of stamps, luring him and doing unspeakable acts to him. May 
four, May 25th, 1984, he ended up taking a female who was 29 years old. Her name was Tatiana. May 25th, 1984. So at the same time, he ended up taking... He also ended up taking the life of Tatiana's daughter, Sveltiana, on June 22nd, 1984, he ended up taking Yolanda. So, again, he is just a horrible, horrible person. Again, many stab wounds, missing eyes, a, uh, very on pattern. All of his victims had missing eyes. Which, while he's doing all of these murders, they're throwing together an invest like a team to like figure out who he is and kind of pro profile him and one of the main things was that he was mentally disturbed like he was a sadist who come to find out he was a sadist but One thing they put together was that because he, he watched his mother get raped, essayed, he found enjoyment in it. He found enjoyment in humiliating these young children. Which, again, leads into the fact that he was a pedo. He got enjoyment off of little kids. And the only reason he would take adults is because sometimes they were easier to lure with money and promising alcohol than children. Because a lot of times children weren't being left alone at this point in time. Because... He, of course, has set the record that he's going to unalive him. So, he ended up taking, on July 19th, 1984, he ended up taking Anna, a 19-year-old female. On... July 28th, 1984, he ended up taking a 20-year-old female, Sarmit, Sarmit, sorry again if I'm mispronouncing these wonderful children and victims' names. August 2nd, 1984, he ended up taking a 16-year-old, Natalia. On August 7th, 1984, he ended up taking a 17-year-old female, Lamidia. Le... Le Demilla? On August 8th to the 11th, he ended up taking a unknown female who was a runaway. Um, she was somewhere in the range of 20 to 25 years old. Now remember, the FBI or the Ukraine FBI is trying to hone in on him at this point in time. They're doing all of this stuff, like, trying to find him the whole nine yards. So, August 13th, 19... 
84, he takes a 10-year-old little female, a 10-year-old little girl, uh, Acromaral? I feel so bad for mispronouncing their names. It's A-K-M-A-R-A-L. Akmaral. Akramal. I think. On August 28, 1984, he ends up taking Alexander Ch Chappelle, who was a little 10-year-old boy. Now, again, he left evidence on this baby. So, they have more DNA evidence for this baby. On September 6th, 1984, he ended up taking a 24-year-old Irina. Arena. Now, this is where he gets arrested. Why does he get arrested? He doesn't get arrested for the crimes. He gets arrested because he got caught stealing linoleum from his company. Well, of course, they file charges. He gets arrested. And they DNA test them. And guess what? He does not match. He is A. His blood. They DNA test him through blood. And his blood sample was A. The samples they have off of the bodies is A, B. So... He got off because he didn't have the same blood type. Even though he committed all of these un just monstrosities to these young children, he got off because of a blood type. Now, if you remember, there is... A genetic disorder where your spooshies or your you know sweat even can have a different DNA than your blood and your saliva now we jump into so he's stressing like okay I can't do this shit in town anymore I got to do this away from town. So, on August 1st, 1985, he takes a 18-year-old female named Natalia from Moscow. Now, he's only doing these... Um, murders, these unalivings in different towns away from where he lives. Because he still lives in Ros Roskov, but in order to keep the police off of his back, he's now only doing it when he goes on a work trip. Or when he enters, like, he'll take a bus ride. To go do what he's got to do. But normally it's on a bus drive. So. In. Shakati. He ended up. Abducting a. 18 year old female. Arena. On. August 27th. 1985. So that's why they're spread out more. So. On the 16th of May, he takes a leg. 16th of May of 1987, he takes a leg, who was a 12 year old little boy from a boarding school. On the July 
29, 1987, he ends up taking a little boy named I Ivan. On September 15, 1987, he took a 16-year-old little boy named Yuri. Again, he finds a lady of the night and takes her to an abandoned, like, warehouse shop. On the sometime in between April 1st and April 4th of 1988, um, she was 22 years old, in between 22 to 28 years old. They still have no identification identification of who she is on may 15 1998 he ended up taking aliski a nine-year-old little boy from Vor uncle well on a business trip like I said, he's only doing these on business trips or if, like, he's visiting another town besides Roscoe. On the 14th of July in 1988, he took a 15-year-old little boy named Yavagini. Which was, he took from... Rostov, which was the first victim since 1985 that he took from Rostov. But he took him from the train de depot. Mm -hmm. On February 28, 1989, he took a 16-year-old Tatiana, who was a runaway. Could you imagine being these kids' mothers and being like, calling into the police, my kid ran away, and they're like, well, we can't help him for 24 hours, and then getting that call. Oof, my heart, it breaks for them. They, uh, this man is horrible may 11th 1989 he took an eight-year-old little boy alexandra on june 20th 1989 he took a 10-year-old boy aliski on August 19th, 1989, he took a 19-year-old female, Yolanda, who was literally a student from Hungary who was on, like, the, um, where they swap out schools. He took her from a bus stop. On August 28th, 1989, he took a 10 year old little boy named Aliski. On January 14th, 1990, he took an 11 year old little boy named Andre. On March 7th, 1990, he took a little boy named Yar. Oslov, I think that's how you pronounce it, Y-A-R-O-S-L-A-V, Yar-Oslov. Now we get into his final victims. On April 4th, 1990, he took a 31 year old female, Lebov. On July 28th, 1990, he took a 13 year old little na boy named Victor. 
August 14, 1990, he took a 11-year-old boy, Ivan. October 16th, or October 17th, he took a 16-year-old boy, Vadim. And October 30th, he took a 16-year-old boy, Victor. So, he ends up getting arrested. He ends up getting, like, they go through and they investigate and they investigate and everything's pointing back to him. So, they arrest him, bring him in. When they arrest him and bring him in, they sentence him to a like psychiatric evaluation with the psychi psychiatric evaluation they find out that he has borderline personality disorder with sadism which go back to my previous video you'll hear me say it, talk about it but basically what it is is he has no impulse control so as he's getting these urges to assault these minors and these sex workers he has nothing in his brain that says stop now add on top of that the sadism he likes watching people get humiliated and he likes causing pain to people so he has nothing to say this is wrong but they declared that he was fit to stay in trial the whole entire time he's on trial he's acting in like weird and insane and his lawyers trying to to diminish his case by saying that he is crazy but the judge brought in like four witnesses that's you know four i guess they'd be witnesses from psych it was four psychiatrics that they brought in that stated that when they like investigated him and they watched him in the 60 day hold he did not act like this so this is a front to put on for the judge so that way he would get it you know he wouldn't be able to be tried guilty for everything that he did but the judge wasn't having any of it. The judge is like, no, you're not insane. Shut up. Go sit down. And when they had, they had the victim's family come up and do their statements. The whole entire time he was kicking around the stool in like his iron cage and because they had an iron cage that he sat in so that way he wouldn't harm anyone um and he ended up like acting out on every single one of them with no care in the world like he didn't feel remorse or anything for what he did well he ended up the judge ended up finding him guilty he got um the death sentence and 76 years so he had to set uh he was sentenced to death plus 76 years on top of it now he well on death row he ended up appealing his case twice both times got denied so they took him out and he died to the firing squad 
Which I'm surprised he made it that far. Honestly, I am. I'm surprised they actually, he actually made it to death row. Um, because if anybody knows, prisoners don't like when you diddle kids. Uh, so yeah, that is Andre. He deserved a wood chipper a long time ago. And he kept deserving said wood chipper. So, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please put them down in the comment section. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And we are out. We love you. And we hope you have an amazing time. Love you all. Bye.